Allies have it. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Ekene Ndulwe. The National Assembly is currently on a break, scheduled to resume after Ramadan. On this edition of the program, we shall focus on the expectations of the incoming 10th National Assembly. Here are the thoughts of some incoming legislators that will be part of the 10th Senate. The 9th Senate, the 9th National Assembly is uh, gradually winding down. Give us your general assessment of how they've performed over the last four years. Well, my personal opinion and with all due modesty and no prejudice to the members of the National Assembly, I feel that they could have done much better. For one thing, they didn't question any of the loans. We are in so much debt and we have nothing to show for it at least very little to show for it and I would have expected that when the first loan was granted before more and more is granted they would have then audited what was done with the previous loans and um, they were primarily rubber stamp I don't think they served the interests of the people as much as they could have that notwithstanding, maybe they had issues and constraints that I'm not aware of. Generally, the legislature have, different legislatures have their um, identities. Uh, you alluded to it, that the Ninth Senate has been tagged or labeled a rubber stamp. The Eighth Senate was regarded as being more combative. What are you expecting from the Tenth Senate in terms of its relationship with the executive? not necessarily combative but certainly interrogative is a better word the way i see it i think that the 10th assembly will be more focused on the needs of the people a little bit more than this not a little bit more maybe a lot more than this particular assembly because uh, most of at the at least 72 new senators in the Senate and if I'm correct maybe only 50 out of all the members of the House of Assembly are old members everybody else is new so we are we I would think that we are more in touch with the people I would say that I'm certainly and I've spoken to the other we 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 have a feel for the pulse of the people and the country and therefore we know that the country is in a bad, very bad place. Therefore, we know that they're not as complacent as they used to be. They're angry and therefore are going to hold us more accountable than they used to. Um, you get messages like, we're watching you guys. Things that they didn't, they, they, they're not as reverent as they used to be. In fact, they are more irreverent now. It's like, we elected you to do certain things and you must do them. That is represent us well. So I think that this time, we're going to be more focused on the people. I think the Caucasus will be more in terms of interests of the people than party interests. Because even now we've started our little senatorial groups and you can see that we're not very focused on parties we've focused on zones we're focused on uh, an area we're focused on the people generally but not so much our parties party interests should have they have to align with people interests we're going to once again be seeing a huge turnover of legislators once the uh, 10th national assembly comes into being mm -hmm. this has been regarded as not to a, a good thing for the growth of the legislature in terms of its impact. Mm -hmm. What would you say about this? I do not think they will be less effective considering those that have been there have gotten 
too comfortable, they've lost touch with the people. So in a way, I think it's good. Okay. It's good because everybody's coming, at least the new ones are coming in, very aware of why are we here a lot more than when you had a lot of former governors everybody's just there for the sake of being there have, you didn't see much coming out of it so i i think it is a good thing until we stabilize as a nation we are not going to be having the three terms four terms even when we do how effective are they for being there so long? We've seen a significant decline in female representation in the legislature in terms of this incoming 10th Senate. We're going to be having three female legislators in the Senate, yourself being one of them. How would you assess this situation? What would you attribute this decline to in regards to having nine senators in the nine Senate, uh, Senates, the outgoing Senate, and this time around it's going to be three Senators that are female. Um, obviously, I mean, it goes without saying that women participation has dropped greatly in the last eight years. First of all, I think this particular Federal Executive Council had probably the least number of women. And then now, the National Assembly, going into the 10th Assembly, we have even much less but it's, it's not that women are not participating. It, the parties are not focused on the fact that women are 50% of the population and therefore, as a nation, for us to develop properly, we have to carry along 50% of our population. There's just no question about it. And um, going forward, I think, like everything else in Nigeria, we never comply unless it's mandatory, and that's the truth. Um, in the parties, whenever delegates are being picked, let's say sometimes they would say three delegates per ward, before they used to bring out all men all over, and then the parties now said, oh, three delegates, but one, one must be female. And once they did that, then it wasn't a question of choice you had to have a woman among the three for compliance. And, and until we do something like that, we are not going to see, I won't be surprised if nothing is done, the next assembly might be no women, but I hope we won't get to that. I am sure that the few men I've spoken to in the National Assembly are quite embarrassed by the situation. And I think as a nation, we are all a little bit embarrassed by it. We are supposed to be the, leader, the leaders of Africa. And look at how well the other countries are doing in terms of look at Rwanda, look at Senegal, look at South Africa. And um, so I think something needs to be done. And that is legislation. Legislation. Oh, oh, yes. If a country like Indonesia, even Rwanda, and possibly Burundi, they, they've legislated their 35%. And then what a lot of countries have found is that when they put the minimum in, women excel, they do so well that the next time they bring them more and more and more. And so the fact that in some countries they're like 60% is out of choice, not because of legislation. Legislation was what opened the door. To, in FCT, I have personally benefited from the fact that there was a female senator long time ago before me. She actually introduced me to FCT politics. And um, she performed so well that it gave women a sort of positive sheen. So there are places I go to campaign and they say, yeah, we're gonna vote for you because women are better, they're kinder, they're, they, they pay more attention, they keep their promises, they do this, and they show me some of the things she did, and that was a very, very long time ago. So her footprints are still here, even though she was senator from 1999 to 2003. So as time, and if I perform, which I know I will, as well as she did, or even better, then it opens the door 
for people to the electorate to realize that, you know, we're not getting less when we vote in women, we're actually getting more. Well, for me, for me, I've always been a gender sensitive person. I've always also supported the gender and uh, the, fem the feminine gender. What I'm saying, I've been a gender sensitive person. I've always supported the feminine gender in whatever area that is possible. I, have a, I had a mother, I have a wife, I have a female daughter. So I want to support them to grow, but I don't want to be to the detriment of tokenism. Uh, just that. No, no. I have told people, time without number, in my class in the university, in the microbiology class, my session, who was taught by a lady. She's a professor today. She didn't get it. She wasn't topping the class because she was a, a female. She topped the class because she had all that it took to be, to top the class. So all I'm saying is that ladies should come out, step out. But in, because this, uh, when you talk about the, um, uh, what do you call it now, Beijing, Beijing, Beijing agenda or Beijing whatever, talking about 30% that, you can do that in appointments, not in election. Because which constituency will you say, okay, this constituency will be for, female or male, which is also uh, uh, against the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's against the Federal Republic because you are now, uh, 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 you have what we call the human right, you, you, you have the, your right. So when you now say, no, it shouldn't be you, on what basis will you make that statement? So all I'm saying, let them step out. Those who can't should be supported. Even starting from the female gender themselves, supporting their, their own. But you don't come out and say, oh, because she's a female, mm. then, no, 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 I don't want it on a on platter of uh, tokenism, no. I, it's unfortunate that it's been happening. Instead of increasing, it's been wavering, and this time declining. But also, not only female. You find out that even the, the, in the legislature I'm talking about, you now find out that even the, the turnout, the, the turnover, this time is, is something uh, alarming, which it shouldn't be. So, in the Senate, I don't think you have more than 50 persons returning. I don't think so. Out of 109 House, I don't think you have up to 100 or 200 returning. You know, the turnover is high. But all the same for the female, he said, I don't know what it is in the House, except you tell me, but like in the Senate, it's unfortunate. But all I'm saying, that should not discourage the feminine gender. They should keep on, one day, they will take over. It happened in so many countries, and gradually, they will, and so many of nice ones are coming up, strong ones, those who have the capacity and the ability. You can see what is happening in Adama, for the first time, a lady, a full and lady, coming out boldly to challenge a sitting governor. If, if, let's assume she doesn't get it, but that alone has made a, a mark. But what I'm saying, let the right things be done. Don't give it to a man because it's a man. Don't dash it to a woman because she's a woman. Let them compete equally, and whoever gets it should be declared, irrespective of uh, gender. Yes. Senate, and it's going to be it's going to be um, a session that is going to be like no order. I say so because um, the new senators, those of us coming in, know um, it's a large number of us. It, it's almost it's almost um, as many as those. In fact, we are more than those that are returning, and um, we seem to 
because in the meetings I've attended, I've attended meetings with new members just like myself, they are very energetic, um, they are very serious about the unity of this country and we all seems to, seem to, um, to agree that this country needs to move from where it is to where it ought to be. And we're starting by unifying uh, the country in every way we can, either by legislation or by example that we will personally set as legislators. Um, coming to the leadership, the, the, the rules here, the, the, the rules of the Senate, um, I have not spoken about religion, tribe, or anything in selecting who becomes our leaders. Um, as you all know, the senators say they are first among equals, and so it's within our rights to elect whoever we believe can help us, uh, can lead the Senate um, in a very pragmatic way. A, a president of the Senate that has a Nigerian look, that can reach out to other segments of the country, a president of the Senate that has the, the unity of Nigeria at heart, uh, a president of the Senate that wants progress for this country, uh, a president of the Senate that is very pragmatic, is the, is the Senate president that I think we should be voting for. Senate's National National Assembly is gradually winding down. Um, what are your overall observations about how the Ninth National Assembly, Ninth Senate went, and what are your expectations as we, uh, the incoming Tenth Senate and National Assembly come into view? Well, every 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 assembly is judged by the character of its leadership, right? So the leadership of the uh, eighth assembly, for instance, was uh, drastically different from that of the ninth assembly. That one of both chambers was very combative, right? Uh, maybe because the the executive never wanted, never liked the way the, the the leadership emerged in both cases. It wasn't their favorite candidates that emerged, so that relationship started. It went sour right from day one, and because of that. Uh, there were a lot of things that could have been done that were not done because of that sour relationship. This, the Ninth Assembly leadership came as a result of the endorsement, if you like, of the executive arm of government. So as a result of that, there was no, the, the, the kind of relationship was dramatically different from that which uh, we had in the Eighth Assembly. To the extent that Nigeria gave uh, the Senate, for instance, a tag of uh, rubber stamp assembly, but a lot of things were still achieved. As a result of that, uh, several uh, okay of the 36 items on the uh, you know consent amendment, the president has signed uh, uh, 16. 19 will not sign. Uh, the leadership says uh, that will be taken up with the uh, the presidency to see why those were not this important. At least that's 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 some step forward. 16 items on uh, in the constitution is quite a leap if you see how. Uh, some constitution like America, maybe after several years, one item will be amended. But because of the way our constitution came into, into being, uh, you know that a lot of inadequacies there and that need to be tinkered with. So if you have, an, and one of them, a very fundamental one, giving autonomy to the state judiciary and the state assemblies. It's a very fundamental, uh, you know, and, and now the, the, the states too have been given uh, the powers to delve into the issue, issue of uh, uh, electricity and uh, I think uh, rail, rail, rail lines too. So those are fundamental, when we're talking about devolution of powers, I think this is part of what we are talking about. So I think uh, th that too is fundamental. So uh, as we come to an end, end, the, the end of the Ninth Assembly, I think um, the Ninth Assembly can also beat their chest that they have achieved something Certainly not to the full extent that we set for ourselves, considering the ninth uh, legislative agenda that was ruled out by uh, leadership of both chambers. You can't say uh, 
were satisfied with what went on, but uh, at least something happened. The tent assembly is coming. Those items that were not signed into law, maybe the, the tent assembly will take a look at them and the reasons for the rejection by the presidency and uh, work on them to represent uh, for the incoming assembly. Uh, the 10th Assembly as it stands, uh, <coughs> my understanding is going to be made up of uh, just three female senators. Uh, this seems to be a reduction from the ninth Senate. What, uh, what would you, what would your reactions to this? Yeah, I took notice of that, that incidentally none of the, I think seven senators mm -hmm. that were female, yeah. none of them is returning. Where well, some went to other elections, some didn't contest, some tried to contest but never got to coming back, uh, you know. So, and it's unfortunate considering that uh, even the seven that we had in the ninth assembly was not seen to be enough. Now that even that number has reduced. Uh, so it means uh, we all have a responsibility, not just the female folk of, you know, fighting harder, but all of us in helping them to grow because uh, it's not ideal considering. Uh, the Beijing declaration that we had uh, so many years back, and and some of the some of the uh, developments that have taken place uh, around the country in terms of female upliftment, this is a setback, if you ask me. Uh, but it only shows, it's only point highlighting or beaming the spotlight on the on the issue uh, that we need to work harder in order to uh, help the female folk. Uh, to, to grow in, in their different areas, especially in the political arena. Yeah. Mm. And generally, we're going to be seeing yet again the high turnover of legislators at uh, the Senate. Then what's your the observation mm. on this one? Yeah, well, the, yeah, the high turnover is concerning, but uh, there's not much one can do about it. We're talking about democracy. Yeah. You can't make a law that, okay, uh, so so number must come back. I mean, that will no longer be democracy. So, as unfortunate as it is, this is something that needs uh, education, uh, voter education. That, well, if you have trained somebody, use so much, so, so much resources to train a legislator, and then you, you, you kick him out, uh, it means that the nation will be losing more resources. Because if, so, for instance, somebody has spent a so, so number of years, maybe a tenure or more, uh, you don't need uh, so much to train him again. To do the job, but if you bring a, a total novice, a rookie, as they say, uh, it, it means that uh, you have to train him. Somebody that absolutely has no idea how the legislature work, it means that you have to train him before he can do the job. And sometimes the training takes quite some time before. If you are a fast catcher, maybe within a year you catch up. But some people will take up to. Some people have confessed to me that maybe it was in the last year that they got the confidence and the the, the competence to do the job the way they sh it should be done and then your tenure is over and you are kicked out. So it's the nation that loses, but it's not something you can do by fiat. It's not something you can do by law. Uh, that would no longer be democracy. You have to do it by convincing people that this is how established democracy uh, do it. Uh, and then if they are convinced, they will do it. If they're not convinced, well, you live with the kind of leadership that, uh, or the situation that you create for yourselves. All right, lastly, Dinguish, uh, just tell us uh, on a personal note, where, where to from here for distinguished senator Okejef? Well, I have done my bit. Uh, by the end of uh, June, I would have stayed 16 years at the National Assembly. I'm grateful to God for the time and the experience, and, and particularly to my to my uh, you know constituents who have had the confidence and the belief in my capacity to represent them for all this while. Thank God, nobody pushed me out. Out of my own volition, I decided not to contest, to give another person the opportunity to contribute to the upliftment of our constituency. So I'm going away a happy man, a fulfilled man. I may not have achieved everything I set out to achieve, but I'm, I'm grateful to God that I was given the opportunity. Uh, some other people have been given the same opportunity. Let them uh, discharge their own to, to our constituency, because at the end of it all, at least uh, we, we are all claiming to be working for our people. So it mustn't be me because even if, even if I wanted to go on and on and on, and there will come a time when I'll, I'll no longer be there and somebody else will have to take. So thank God I'm, I'm, uh, I've stepped down for another person. And so I'm a fulfilled man. As for what will happen tomorrow, I'll leave that in God's hands. Uh, I'll rest first before I'll see what will happen. I'm a trained lawyer. Uh, so uh, that knowledge should not be wasted. Uh, 
Uh, but let's leave it in God's hands after I've uh, gone out and rested enough. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And thank you, distinguished Senator Okadev, for your perspective. Thanks for having me. That concludes this week's edition of Senate 109. Thanks for your time. You can also watch these and other editions of this program and others online via our NTA YouTube channel. Scroll to NTA News and click on videos. I am Ekene Ndulwe.